Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the pledge as we call it uh, meeting to order. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alderman King? Here. Alderman Stone? Here. Alderman Tripp? Here. Alderman Picaro? Here. Alderman Cassetti? Alderman Filippo? Here. Alderman Dempsey? Here. Alderman Chris Lightis? Here. Alderman Yellman? Here. Alderman Rivers? Here. Alderman O'Brien? Here. Alderman Short? Here. Alderman Blackwell? Alderman DeLibra? 11 present and 3 absent. I declare a quorum. Uh, can I have consideration of pre previous minutes? Motion to accept. Mr. Yellman, second goodbye. Second. Mr. Rivers, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Public session. Would anyone from the public wish to speak? Please come forward. Please limit your, limit your comments to three minutes, please, as we have a robust crowd tonight. Thank you. Richard DiCarlo, uh, the Ansonia Cults Commission would like to present the winners of the House Decorating Contest and the um, Gingerbread House uh, Contest, uh, sponsored by 80s. And we'd love to invite the uh, mayor to make the presentation, if that's okay. Sure. Are there any gingerbreads in there? <laughs> We're going to do the uh, gingerbread houses first for the winners of the Great and Sonia Gingerbread House contest. Okay. The first. Uh, do you want to start with the third prize winner and work your way up to the first prize? That's what it is. Okay. And this is uh, the beginning is the the uh, gingerbread, correct? Okay. For the third prize is Janae Simpson. Okay, you kindly give that to her. The second prize is Gypsy Souza. Uh, Suez? Is she present? Okay. We're batting a thousand. And the first prize goes to Alexi Putamat. Okay, Alexi Putamat again. She's, she's a birthday. So we are batting a thousand. <laughs> but we do have the first place children. Okay. Congratulations to that. The, the, next order, the next order of business is the uh, um, first, pr first prize for the children's division, which was, was this the house decorating contest? This is for the gingerbread. The gingerbread. Okay. Uh, you wrote in uh, I'm sorry, it's three font. I can't read that. So give me that. That's it. Dawn and Kaylee Ossie. I know them. Are they here? Dawn and Kaylee Ossie? Okay, and this is for the house decorating contest. I'll start again at the third place holiday house. It is the V and E Feliciano at 195 Howard Avenue. Are they present? Chris, did you call these people? <laughs> okay, okay. The second prize for the decorating contest goes to Jennifer Zielinski and Bill Cowell. And the first prize again goes to Jay Cedar at 33 Castle Lane. Good job. Good job. You notified everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else from the public wish to speak? 
Would anyone else from the public wish to speak? Yes, name and address, please. Mr. DeBacco. Joe DeBacco, uh, Assistant Superintendent here at Antonio Public Schools. I'm here today to first see if um, there's a communication item from the, the, that the board had sent. I'm more than willing to answer any questions if you would like to discuss it at that time or if you would like for me to speak now in public session. It's totally up to the alderman I, of what your desire is. I don't, just because it is a communication item, I, I don't know how much discussion that there will be. I just wanted to avail myself, but also be able to at least tell you about this communication item and where this number and, and the ideas have come from. But if you'd like for me to speak now, I'm more than willing to at least give you an idea of what it's all about, or if you'd like to, when you guys discuss it, totally up to my own. Any questions from Mr. Dr. DeBacco? Yeah. Sure. Well, I guess we'll discuss it when we uh, bring up that And I'll, I'll come up when it's discussion. I just thank won't you. be able to speak. All right, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else from the public wish to speak? Would anyone else from the public wish to speak? Last call. Anyone else? Hearing none, seeing none, public sessions closed. Oh. I'd, like to, um, I'd like to have a motion to accept late communication number one to the agenda. Mr. No. Schiller. Uh, point of order, Mr. Uh, President, we cannot accept late communications for a special meeting. Okay. Scratch that. Uh, Mayor Pesetti, public yeah. official session. <coughs> Good evening, President Vaccaro, members of the Board of Aldermen and residents of the great city of Ansonia. Tonight we are honoring two individuals who have distinguished themselves through their ingenuity and kindness and have made us all very proud. The first is Miss Lakeisha Steins, who is an inventor and a mother of six. Her invention will help save lives and prevent drunk driving. If you haven't read her story, I encourage you to do so. It's inspiring. And now I would like to present Lakeisha with an official proclamation. Lakeisha, please come up to be recognized. I'm gonna read this. Lakeisha Steins, whereas today we gather here to honor Lakeisha Steins of Ansonia, a mother of six and grandmother of eight. And whereas Lakeisha was greatly affected as a young child when she saw a close friend lie in a casket holding her baby. Both of them had died at the hands of a drunk driver. And whereas the memory of that experience when Lakeisha was at the impressionable age stayed with her for more than three decades, combined with learning of the friend's families devastated by the drunk driver four years ago prompted a dream. And whereas she dreamt about what has become sober touch censoring, a device that will not allow a, dr a drunk driver to get behind the wheel. Lakeisha has worked vigorously to enforce the safety of mankind. And whereas the city of Ansonia and its residents have been innovators and inventors for hundreds of years, and whereas we recognize the limitless potential of resources amongst our residents, and whereas we are extremely proud of the ingenuity and perseverance of our resident, Lakeisha Steins. Now, therefore, I, David S. Cassetti, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor, proclaim it an honor and privilege on behalf of all the citizens of Ansonia to extend our appreciation for your outstanding performance of duty. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, I want to recognize another Valley resident who has worked in Ansonia for the last 13 years. His name is Frankie Martin. 
If you're like me, you're wondering where you heard the name before. After a very persistent and dedicated public works employee shared Frankie's story, I thought it would be a nice idea to recognize him. So thank you, Darlene Suiza, for being so persistent. You're, you're thought, you thought enough of this man to have him be recognized. He has been an employee of Big Y in Ansoni for the past 13 years. And for, from what I am told, it's been kind, he has been kind, helpful, and always smiling. He always has a kind word. He is courteous and pleasant to our residents, and everyone who shops there has something nice to say about him. In a world where it is sometimes difficult to remain positive, Frankie stands out. He is married to his lovely wife, Maria, and he has two children, Michael and Dan. Frankie, I want to thank you for your generous and caring presence, and we hope more people can be thoughtful and kind as you are. Please come up, Frankie, as a token of our appreciation. As a token of our appreciation, how would you say? As a token of our appreciation, I would like to present you with the key to the city. Okay, it opens most doors in the city here. <laughs> so, <laughs> no money. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Next, please join us in Aldermatic Chambers this Friday to swear in our new Acting Chief of Police, Andy Cota. Andy <coughs> has, has made us all very proud. Rising up to the Lieutenant, he will now fill the capable shoes of retired Chief Kevin Hale. Andy, or LT, as you once were referred to, has been with the Ansonia Police Department since 1992. He has been here for 27 years. He spent 18 years as a lieutenant, and the blue blood runs in his family. His father, Andy Cota Sr., was the retired chief of police for the city of Derby Police Department. Congratulations, Andy, and please join us this Friday, February 15th at 9 o'clock to swear Andy in as our acting chief. So congratulations. <laughs> Let's turn our attention to the agreement you will be voting on between the Board of Education and the City of Ansonia. This agreement marks an important milestone in what I hope will be a more open dialogue between Ansonia and our Board of Education. This agreement is the result of cooperation and compromise, and I want to thank the Board of Education and the Board of Aldermen. The compromise does two things. One, it addresses, it addresses budgetary concerns, and two, it paves the path forward to identify savings for the overall good of the residents of Ansonia. I especially want to thank all 12 aldermen who spent many hours in these <coughs> chambers discussing the particulars of disagreement in executive session last Monday. I know it was difficult for you to make this decision. You want to be good shepherds of the taxpayer's money, but at the same time, you want to ensure that our children get the best education possible and that our teachers have the resources they need to get the job done. I thank you for your dedication and thoughtfulness towards these goals. Sometimes our jobs can be very challenging, but in the end, I am comfortable that we are doing the right thing for each and every one of our residents. This agreement is certainly a step in the right direction. We have been asking for information to make more informed decisions about our taxpayers' dollars. And now hopefully, hopefully, we will be able to see a more complete picture and be able to make the best decisions possible for our children, teachers, and all our residents. Again, I thank you for your hard work, 
I am proud of all of you. I know your budgetary decisions will be easier now that you will have a more detailed information and more complete picture. I also know that we are not alone in Ansonia. I believe that many other communities face similar situations and I also believe that the state is finally beginning to hear our voices. I want to conclude my remarks by reading a portion of a letter written by the Executive Director of CCM, the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Joseph DeLong, as you may know, CCM represents 168 member communities in Connecticut and Ansonia is a member. They are our voice in Hartford and an advocate for taxpayers throughout Connecticut. Joe references Senate Bill 454, submitted this legislative season that establishes a commission to develop a plan to implement the regional consolidation of school districts. To be clear, CCM supports some of what the bill proposes, but not the entire bill in its present form. Here are some of Mr. DeLong's comments. The bill is a good way to discuss serious inefficiencies and lack of transparency within school districts. As you know, by far, the single largest cost driver in your budgets is the education budget, over which municipal CEOs have little, if any, control. Using Senate Bill 454, a focus on municipal officials' long-standing concerns with public education while we have a state leaders in the public's focus on the matter has a real strategic value. Mr. DeLong writes, CCM believes that at the state capitol more decisions need to be data-driven. We seek more opportunities for more data gathering discussions regarding public education. The proposal marks the beginning of the legislative process. Many more conversations, public debate, and deliberations are to come. Our goals are to the highlight much needed reforms for the public educational system and to ensure that many, many municipal CEOs have a seat at the table and that your collective concerns about the system are heard. CCM understands the frustration that all of us feel about is exactly what you are doing tonight this with this agreement in fact we are also exploring regionalization with Derby and that too will help improve efficiency and effectiveness thank you Alderman Vaccaro and Alderman Yalman for your efforts in that regard and all the members of the school regionalization board your decisions need to be data driven and your request for further discussion, transparency, and fact-finding are implied with this agreement. You are ensuring that you have a seat at the table when discussing Ansonia's education system. This will help you to make more fair and informed fund funding decisions for everyone. Thank you, God bless you all, and God bless the city of Ansonia. Are there any questions for the, from the Alderman from Mayor Cassetti? At this point, I'd like to ask for a motion to move executive session to this part of the agenda as we have the Ansonia Board of Education here tonight. So um, we have that motion to move to executive session. Anyone? Mr. King, is there a second? Mr. Rivers, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. We're going to move to executive session, folks. Uh, Mr. Marini. Thank you to the mayor and John and Sheila and everyone, including Richie, for having the confidence in my ability to take on this new responsibility. I've been with the city since 2005, started at the PD, went to the tax office, and been up in finance <coughs> for over six years. So as usual, I'll continue to do my best and work with everybody to get everything we need accomplished. Thank you very much. Thanks. Like Kim said, she's been with the city for some time. We have a great financial team that's been under the stewardship of uh, Rich Bashar for some time. We're really looking forward to working with him in a new capacity. 
Uh, number two, just in general, it is snow season, so as you uh, go about your business through your ward, remember if you're seeing driveways, sidewalks not being clean, and now it's 24, 48 hours after the storm, please call it into the Blight Building Department. That way we can get some action, especially in those areas where there's high traffic. That also goes for commercial, probably even more so. A lot of commercial areas, sometimes the sidewalks are not clean. Uh, that could be a problem. It is the owner's responsibility to be cleaning the walks according to our ordinances. Don't uh, be shy about reporting the, those uh, incidents to City Hall. And beyond that, um, we just went through executive session and we'll be following up on those issues later. Um, again, I echo the mayor. I think we have the beginnings of a very good compromise where really there are no losers. Uh, this is certainly a win-win going forward, but you know, as we discussed, we're going to be going forward with more of the details. Any yeah. questions? Uh, where are we with uh, the language for permitted parking, parking for the west side? So we're going to meet with our new acting chief and I think hammer out those details in a month of time. Um, another question. In regards to snow, all right, we don't have anybody like at 9, 10 o'clock at night while these guys are dumping it in the middle of the road. In this last storm, I think I speak for a good amount of people on this board, we had a lot of issues in our wards with people snow blowing it into the road and contractors leaving it in the road and too many cars parked close to the corner, plows having trouble and not able to curb to curb our road. So do we contact City Hall or should we contact PD? Contact us. Uh, Public Works calls us, whether it's on the radio or on the phone, a lot of times if your cars that are maybe in a spot that can't get a plow through, anybody shoveling snow, let us know, especially after hours. We'll, uh, we'll definitely take care of that. We'll so take a look, get it resolved one way or the other for you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions for Mr. Marini? Okay, thank you. Sheila Mal. All right, thank you, uh, President Vicaro, members of the Board of Aldermen. Quick update, not so quick, but quick. Um, so 65 Main Street, actually all many of the things that I'm gonna talk about are on the agenda already, but 65 Main Street, we um, would like your approval of a, a bid reward to absolute furniture removal, I believe is the name. Um, and they're going to be removing three floors of furniture from the home of the new um, police facility. Um, get everything cleared out and ready to go for the general contractor to come in. So we're just, we're basically, uh, Chairman Heon and the PD Building Committee, we're basically looking at things that we can do in preparation for the general contractor to come in. Um, the, the architect has indicated that uh, CDs or contract documents should be ready uh, very shortly, within a week or two. And um, at that point, we'll be able to go out to bid for a general contractor. And again, the roof is going to be the first item addressed, which is a big ticket item, but we're going to start with that. Um, so that's 65 Main Street, so you have that on your agenda. Um, and Sonia Copper and Brass, EPA should be sending its final report to us. Um, with the shutdown, they, they have uh, had problems getting, getting that out to us on uh, and Sonia Copper and Brass, what they did as part of their emergency removal. Um, and they're also talking to us about the Pandal property, which is that 3.5 acre site. Um, with uh, some issues uh, of uh, a roof collapsing fire and uh, emergency services and PD were out there, um, if you recall, about a year ago, maybe, two, year and a half. Um, so we're, tr we're working with EPA on possibly some funding for um, some cleanup and demolition of that property. And um, we travel, the mayor and uh, staff travel to um, DECD to talk to the acting commissioner who will be stepping down into his uh, deputy commissioner role or stepping back into his deputy commissioner role to talk about um, uh, additional opportunities for our opportunity zone and for the development of the two city-owned properties. Um, the state has indicated that they're going to try to pool their resources, so if we've got an opportunity zone and you've got a developer coming in, 
um, and they've got an investment already made, then um, the state will look to further that investment or try to pull their resources from all different from all different uh, agencies. We already have uh, Department of Transportation and Department of Economic and Community Development funding for our Main Street. Um, community connectivity, we want to get moving with that. Um, it's going to be some aesthetic enhancements and also some sidewalk improvements. Prindle and Pulaski, um, DOT came back, traffic and engineering with additional comments. Those have been addressed, sent back to DOT. We think that's it. Hopefully we won't talk about going out to bid. We'll just have gone out to bid and I'll bring that bid um, reward or um, award to you for approval. That's Prindle and Pulaski. Um, I have to think, uh, let's see what is going on. Segments three and four are, are getting ready to, to go before uh, Inland Wetlands. They, they're getting P and Z approval and Inland Wetlands approval um, to move forward and we're moving forward on encroachment issues. Looks like the target area is going to be resolved. Target has um, has come back and, and gotten all the necessary approvals they need. That um, the developer needs a um, he needs a right of way for a an entrance and exit into his development. Otherwise, he can't get the building pads built. So it looks like that's moving. Deep Deep will have the final review. Um, and say on that, and they have indicated to me that they're going to move in a very expeditious fashion to get that taken care of. And I feel like I've talked, spoken too much already. Um, I think another opportunity to get an additional $200,000 for additional site work on Ansoni Copper and Brass. Looks like we may be um, getting that money, another $200,000. And um, that's it for now. Are there any questions? I'm hoping there are. All the Mr. Stowe. Thanks for the hard good work you do. All right, thank you. At the last uh, EDC meeting, uh, Ramon Peralta yes. came and made a presentation um, that uh, Mr. Lineski organized, and I didn't, I didn't know if you wanted to just touch on that or not. Yeah, I mean, the... the um, something for the future, possibly. Yeah, we'll be, we'll probably bring it to this board too, to uh, for your input. But um, EDC is looking at a marketing campaign and to redo um, a lot of what some of the. Well, you could speak to this better than I can, but we're we're essentially looking for a redesign for our um, our page, so that we can do some more promotional activities for our downtown businesses. Um, so total redesign, and we did speak to uh, app and an app-friendly design with a focus on the restaurants and a new branding, logo, etc. We're going to try to build on the success that we already have with the um, with the new restaurants coming in. It's exciting. It is very exciting. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Assuming there's sure. no assuming there's no delays with the DOT corrections for the, the Pulaski Prindle, will that still be summerish? No. Well, we want to get it out to bid now, this month. Hopefully. I'm talking about construction wise. And uh, construction? Right. Yeah, after the school year. Right. Yeah. Summer. Spring, yeah, summer. Spring, summer. Okay. Any other questions for Sheila? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bashir, any comments or questions? Or any any uh, comments tonight? Um, but I'd like to first say congratulations to Kim, how proud and happy I am for her that she's going to be taking over. So we'll be working to transition all the stuff that I've been doing to her, and then we'll move forward there. Um, there are bands coming due next month. We'll be working on refinancing bands in a short term fashion, I'm probably flipping from $2 million to $5 million for a short two to three month period. Uh, hoping to get to the point where we have a contract for the PD so we can flip right to a bonding process. So that's the original, that's the current plan. Uh, it's not set in stone, but that's kind of what we're looking to do is to capture the rates while they're low, 
and see what we can do to structure the debt as we're uh, retiring the old debt and, and get the new debt in here. Um, you know, the fiber, we have made connection through CEN on our fiber. I need to get our, our tech guy in so that we can flip it. We need to take the whole system down. So uh, I've already emailed him. Maybe Monday when we have the day off, I might try to get him in. But we are working closer to that. Jared's working diligently on the fiber with the, uh, the communication for uh, voice over IP. Uh, we're still probably four months out, maybe six in that range, but hopefully. By the end of this year, we have a voice over IP system running off the fiber line. Um, interest rates are creeping up, and we're working on capitalizing those as best we can. And the budget is starting, uh, waiting on the state to see what they're going to do. It's really uh, kind of a big piece for us. So as we start to get information and data, we'll start uh, in getting the finance committee and this board and vote together so that we can start reviewing the budget process. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bashara? Thank you, Rich. Okay. Acting Chief Coda. Good evening, Tim. Congratulations. I'll start with you. Um, I want to thank you, uh, the board and the city, for the uh, support you showed me in choosing me to uh, serve the city in another capacity now as the acting chief in hopes of making that permanent down the road. But we'll work on that when we get there. So. Um, just a quick update, I won't take a lot of your time. We uh, just released an officer from his field training status to full-time um, solo patrol status. So he'll, you'll see you have another officer's out on the road. Uh, you will see two officers still driving around. That's another officer in field training. Uh, Mid-April, we expect to have him released uh, to solo status. And we have one more um, in the academy. We expect out uh, mid-March. And then again, uh, into field training for a late summer release with everything going the way it should be. Uh, so we're continuing to uh, keep our staff uh, replenished and putting more officers on the street. Uh, we did have a little rash uh, about two weeks ago, uh, about five or six cars, maybe a half dozen, uh, had been gone through on the west side. We were very well aware of it. Uh, neighbors called us when they went out in the morning to their vehicles. We think it's related to the um, same type of incidents up in Seymour. So we're working on that to see if we can identify the suspects, we did have some witnesses, they just don't know exactly who the people are, but they gave us some descriptions. So we may be able to, to work from that and hopefully resolve that. Um, you may have seen a news release today. We're looking for a 16 year old female. It was a uh, possible runaway, um, no danger that she, she had an argument with her a family relative and uh, she ran off. So we're trying to locate her. Um, usually once we get to the social media and it works pretty well, the kids start reaching out to us and tell us where they are and hopefully there'll be safe resolution to that. And as, as you know, uh, working on a transition, um, Chief Hale is done Friday. I'll be taking over in that. For the past week and a half, I've been doing most of that, working with uh, the two lieutenants, getting our duties separated and switched and, and, and taking the helm there. Uh, again, the same as before, the door is open, communication lines are open. If you need anything, concerns, call us, call me. Um, I will get back to you and we'll continue to work in that fashion. Uh, we're here for you to, to assist. So if you have any concerns in your, in your areas or in the city at all, please be sure to call me. And I'm sure we'll have more conversations uh, outside of this meeting. Thank you. Any questions for Acting Chief Coda? Mr. Stout. Congratulations, Mr. Coda. Did you, did you take the Chief's phone number, cell phone number when you leave? I will not. No, I will not. your own? Yes, I will get that to you. I, have, I believe I have everybody's email, so I will send that out to you and, and get it to you, so if you need to reach me. Thank you. We had to. Westminster Kent Kennel Club last night. My wife wanted to know if Kane, she made her think of Kane, because he's coming <laughs> here. If he's had any arrests or anything. Um, he's had some tracks. Um, he did have about two weeks ago, but he's uh, he's busy. He's a, really, he's a good tracker, so he really helps us out. Um, he's had a couple lot of town tracks also. So. Still working with us. Well, thank you. Any other questions for the acting chief? Thank you, chief. Uh, Mr. Galesio from Public Works will not be here tonight. He worked 36 hour um, shift. So he got excused for tonight. Any, any information you guys need, you can email him. He'll gladly answer his emails. Thank you. Um, committee reports, finance committee, Mr. Stowe. I have nothing to say at this time. Except that you move to pay all bills and yeah. to be oh, active. Yeah. Usually, Rich does. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to pay all bills to be active? 
found to be accurate and correct. So moved. Second by Mr. Yama. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, Public Works Committee, since Mr. Delesio is not here, we're going to be skipping over that. Arms Committee, Mr. Blackwell is not here, but Mr. Sheward is. Yeah. Um, very briefly, um, <coughs> 167 calls for the month of January. And Chief Dion, I don't know if you want to add um, any financials. The collection of information was in We are about a week away from moving back into our building, uh, these new offices. And hopefully we'll have everything back in in about two weeks. And uh, once we get settled back in, I'll have everybody down there to take a look at the process that we went through. Uh, kind of just on a, a side note, uh, the acting chief and I, over the last week, uh, been working with our vendor, and we successfully in implemented a new console at the police dispatch center, which if anyone's been up there, uh, knows that it was quite a mess uh, in there that we, uh, years of wires and things like that that we've uh, encountered, and we uh, put the new console in. We couldn't wait for the new PD, all the console was failing. Um, so uh, we successfully cut that over. And to date, I believe the dispatchers are all working fine with it. Uh, made a couple of adjustments. Yeah, my name for it. Uh, everything seems to be working well, so we're off the line with that. That's it. Okay, uh, fire committee, Mr. Shore. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll give very brief, and I'll just give uh, Trish the just the stuff. But uh, for the month of January, there was an uptick in calls, 55 calls, and the specifics are on here. Mr. Yaman, Ordinance Committee. Uh, we did not have a meeting this past month. I know a meeting is needed. I know uh, Chairman Ian has asked for that to address that. That has been forwarded to Corporation Council. I know Corporation Council has also taken a look at the park and everything. So I just get a meeting uh, coming up. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cassetti is not here tonight for a housing committee report, so we'll skip that. Any other committees to report, gentlemen? Mr. Stahl? WPCA, we're getting right. Usually I don't have much to say, but we're doing a, a flow study. We hired this DPC engineering. Uh, we've got good th thorough bidding, and we saved quite a bit of money, but um, we're going to check to see if the pipes are being infiltrated or how they're, you know, good they're working. And uh, I'm sure the mayor, I and WPCA are looking forward to that. Yes. So we know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Municipal reports, vote recommendations. There are motion to approve the six vote recommendations. Mr. King, second by Mr. Schuler. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, land use reports. <coughs> I'd like to make note that um, light enforcement for the month of January brought in $18,250.50. And for the month, total revenue was $43,812. Can I have a motion to accept this report? Mr. Yalman? Mr. Rivers seconded. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Tax collector, Mr. Castellites. Make a motion to accept the tax collector's report and request for refunds in the amount of $2,912.48 if found to be correct. For a second, Mr. Yaman. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> accidents and claims. Mr. Castellites. Motion to refer all accidents and claims to Corporation Council. For a second, Mr. Yaman. Sorry, Mr. Dempsey. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, communications. Communication number one. Um, it's from Superintendent of Schools. Please accept this communication as request from the Ansonia Board of Education that the Ansonia Board of Aldermen authorize the BOE to apply to the Commissioner of Administrative Services in accordance with provisions of Connecticut General Statute Section 10 283 for a grant to construct a new middle school and to accept or reject such grant 
that may be offered and further for the Board of Aldermen to make a supplemental appropriation to the Board of Education for the 2018-19 fiscal year funds necessary for processing and submitting such application in the amount of $20,000. The Board of Education is happy to answer any questions the Board of Aldermen may have regarding this request. Thank you in advance for your consideration. This request is really Carol Malone, Superintendent of Schools. Mr. Um, President? Yes. At this point, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Board of Education to apply for the State of Connecticut for a grant to construct a new middle school and a necessary application funds in the amount of $20,000. I'll second it. Mr. Discussion. Mr. 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 No, go ahead. I'd like to hear from Mr. Yeah. If you don't mind, thank you, President Carl and Alderman. Uh, briefly, uh, upon arrival here in Ansonia, which thank you guys for allowing me to enjoy your beautiful city. But upon arrival, um, I commissioned an RFP in March of 2018. I wanted to have a five-year or 10-year plan going forward, so commissioned a facilities and demographic studies. If you look demographically speaking, on average, most, most municipalities are losing student populations about 6.2%. We're losing about 1% a year. So we're, we're a little bit different than everyone else, but I didn't know that until our facilities and demographic study, which I put on our website today. And I'll tell you why I put it on our website today, because there were a couple different <coughs> possibilities and different things that were out there that until now, it wasn't for public consumption because they were privately owned properties and having that information out earlier could, could change the, the landscape of different things. But to have a facilities and demographic study, I wanted to add to be able to make sure that I could plan appropriately and budget appropriately in moving forward to actually have the data as the mayor said to back up why we're doing things and what's going on it was never you know, my intention or what I did find out is I found the age of certain buildings how long buildings have been used and one thing is it came out of the study which me being new your middle school was built in 1936 1936 without to be honest a major code update you have to think to yourself, if you're 83 years old and never been to a doctor, what are you going to look like? To be honest with you, it looks like our middle school. But it also, I never would have imagined also the fire life safety recommendations that between the Silver Pritzicelli, Malone McBroom, the organizations they came out, it's, it's a very expensive proposition to, to make those renovations, which we don't get that money back. I'm going to have to come hat in hand and ask you, these are things that we need to do. We actually have modulars that are in the back that house our most fragile population are, are pre-K kids. They're at the end of life. I, I didn't know that, but I, I know it now. And so it's very hard for me to have kids going into a building. And also, I look every day at our high school. You guys, that's a flagship. That's a beautiful high school, very forward thinking. It's still 20 years old. It's, it's gorgeous. The problem that we have is I'm going to need, I'm going to be, we're going to need a considerable amount of money and do you want to throw that amount of money to renovations? Especially now, if you look at school construction, the middle school sits on 4.2 acres. They said they need to renovate that building like new on the site that it is. You need a minimum of 15 acres. Guess what? You can't renovate that building like new. So you have to look for other possibilities and other potentialities. The other problem with our middle school, not just the aging condition, <coughs> is the fact that there's one open courtyard. If when you do an evacuation in that building, and I talked to Chief Hale, and I, I, do, I probably had the same conversation with Chief Hoda, uh, Coda, when we do an evacuation, they all come out of that courtyard. That's called the kill zone. There's one place that everyone comes out. I can't have students, when we do evacuations full scale, to, to dismiss on a the street. There's no bus loop drop off. There's just one courtyard. And to me, I got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And you're telling me, hey, I mean, when they did the security audit, they're going to call that a kill zone. If I don't bring this to your attention, I would be remiss and I would be negligent. I think it's incumbent on us to take a look at any options that we can. And not to mention, when we did meet with the state on January 8th, any plan that we had to present had to have the, the concept of regionalization built in to what we were presenting. And so the plans that we have, which I'd be more than willing to sit down with you, President Vicaro, to at least go over and show you more in detail which of what it looks like but it's it's conceptual but the thing is there's numbers right now 
to renovate like new, even if they wanted to, if you look at the report, it's 53 to $60 million to renovate the original structure as new. It's over 100,000 square feet. We don't need that, much square, that many square feet, not to mention we don't need to heat and cool that large of a building. The building that they're going to present to build like new is about $36 million. The, renov the rates are different. Renovate like new, you're going to get 77.5%. Build like new, you get 66.5%. 66 you can renovate like new and bond for, you know, $12.7 million or build like new and bond for 11.7. So you could build a new building for about a million dollars less. I would once again be remiss if I didn't at least bring something like that to our attention. It's something that the community needs to think about. It's something that we really need to look forward to. I, I'd be honest with you. It's, I think it's something that maybe we can do something to bring everyone together and it's something that, from what I hear, when you put the high school together, the, the community really rallied. And to be honest, it is your flagship. I can tell you, and I'm not here to talk about Derby, that's not my, my thing is, that high school was built in 1956. The middle school was built in 2009. That middle school, 72,000 square feet. It's not gonna house more students, it's just not. The high school, I'm not here to say anything about Derby, because that's not my thing, but I want to get us in a place, if we were to regionalize, there's two different options, just so you know. If we build a new mi middle school on the same property as the high school, we can add another level. Another level that would, accom that would accommodate the students if we were to regionalize. And if you said we're only going to regionalize the high school, I could have a 9-10 academy at that new building and 11-12 academy at the high school. And the State Department of Education, when we went to the Office of Grants and uh, management, and we met with Constance, uh, Costas Diamantes, he would not hear of anything unless we had a plan that included regionalization as an option. Otherwise, he was, he was pretty, um, pretty direct, and he didn't want to hear anything else that anyone had to say. He talked to the architects and just said, it's just what the plan is. So what we're asking right now is something called Ed Specification, Ed Specs. It's harder numbers, better numbers real-time numbers and what is it really going to cost if we really did this that's what that twenty thousand dollars and you know what once again people say you know we need to do something now that building's at end of life and we really need to take a look at every available option and our kids are in there and i look at many of the people around everyone loves sending their kid to our high school not as many people want to send their kid to our middle school and you tell me why i have people tell me like when they go there to vote, they're like, wow, this building still looks the same and smells the same as, as it did when I went to school. Well, that's a problem, especially the problem that we need to have classes that, I mean, 83 years ago, do you think the science classrooms were the same as they are now? The needs of our students, are they the same now? If the answer is no, you, you, you know what we need to do. We need to at least investigate. So that's why I'm here, just to provide any background information. I have, I mean, the gentleman we met, very probably more helpful about the process and about funding but I'm here to say I know that the building has flaws I know it's going to cost a lot of money I also do know there's some safety not some there's a grave safety concern and if I didn't bring it to you or bring it to your attention I would be negligent and so I'm bringing it now to my alderman and bringing it to you president and I don't like I said at a later date I'd love to go over diff the different options but at this time we were given the nod from the state to say why don't you do this process concurrently and see what happens because we don't know what's going to happen with regionalization and do you want to wait two more years to decide what's going to happen i don't i'd rather have a plan in place you know having a plan is better than just waiting and kicking that can one more time down down the street so i'm here if you have any other questions but i want my alderman to know that I should, I should yes, yes sir uh, thank you for, uh, for that information especially for the fact that you addressed the regionalization issue, which we have in question. Just um, on the time that you're mentioning, do you have like a, like a, a general idea timeline-wise from when the regionalization committee is set to give their first report versus the amount of time for this process versus when you, you know, the, well, the building would be approved and that will happen? Well, first of all, when we do add specs, the, from what I read from the Groton educational specs that I was given is that they'll have these within a, a couple months to us. 
the only thing that I, I, I do worry in general with the regional, regionalization process, things are going to move forward. They're doing their studies, but there's always time for a little bit of extensions, and I don't know where that's going to go. I'm not on that committee. I only I get the re I read the reports, so I don't know exactly when all their reports are going to come out, but your ed specifications should be done. We should have those before the end of our school year, which you'll know that information. It's easily more quickly to get that the regionalization studies are going to take a longer amount of time from from my knowledge so we'll have you'll have that that number before you'll have or you'll have that information well before you'll know about regionalization and where it's going to go this was the hot topic at our regionalization meeting I'm on sure Monday night you saw both papers you have excellent yeah. coverage from Mr. Mako thank you and um, it was we were there was a, uh, a suggestion brought up to have the committee submit a letter to Grove Street to the Board of Education administration requesting uh, you know that they hold off on this re this request for a new middle school so we're in the middle of re regionalization we started I believe in July we saw you at one meeting and we never saw a superintendent at any meetings seven months seven months not one meeting President Bicar that's I pretty that's I'm sorry I, I what kind of inter interest can we have in you know when I, we don't I have, have friends of Ansonia the same night I'm, I'm on the board of directors the friend it's the same night as regionalization so that's where I am just for the record just so board members know and I said if in just if they needed me to explain anything I'd be more than willing to go just I just want to let you know where my attendance I wanted to have I wanted to table this until we find out a little bit more about regionalization that's how I felt that's how I but, feel about it my feelings I also do think it, it's also in, uh, I mean, I think the alderman's best interest, if we are ever able to have um, the, the gentleman we met with at the state, so it's not you hearing it from me, it's you hearing it right from who we who we met with. We had some, we had board members there. I know I had, uh, Bobby Evans was there, uh, Mr. Rizzo was there, Mr. Scarlatta, um, Superintendent Malone, and we were there with Malone McBroom, Silver Pitcher Selling, and we were there with um, the people from Office of School Construction and Grants. and. Um, I think some of the questions that you probably have, he is actually the person who could answer them best. But I'm just bringing it to you today that of what I found in our study. And I just, like I said, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you the results of it because they are concerning. And I, I want my alderman to know. Mr. Yaman. Yeah, that was gonna, what I was going to say. You mentioned in, the, in providing us that information, um, demographics, the plan, the conceptual renderings, in addition, you have been talking about this conversation that you had up in Hartford. I'd be interested in knowing more about the process and exactly what goes into this and, and what is the sort of Steps. timeline, the plan, and everything that's going away. All I have in front of me is a letter. We're making, making this request. So if we can get additional information, and certainly you know, obviously look at it, research it, and, and do our due diligence. I, I did put the whole facilities and um, demographic study on, the, on our School, on our web page so you'll have all the schematics you'll have those things you'll have the findings you'll have what are the rough estimate of costs and those things are there the process and I, I'm here I'm being completely I'm not here to talk about the process and or the funding because that's my my whole you know purpose of being here is I found this out by something that I did you know the process the process and funding how it's been done concurrently we learned a lot when we went to Hartford it's not something that I profess to, to know about, and that's why I would always defer to the, the person. I mean, there's one gatekeeper. It's that one person who he's going to, he gives you the nod yes or no, which I didn't believe, but I saw it firsthand um, when I went to Hartford. I thought there was other layers, but I was very, I quickly learned that that was the one person that will tell you yes, no, maybe. And so I think that's somebody that I think my alderman, it would benefit any of those questions that either lay fears or to give you any reason to do whatever you need to do but that definitely more information for you would you be able to forward that contact information? I, I will definitely send it to you appreciate it thank you Mr. Stowe did you have your hand up? it was going to go up you know. so we so we if I was a taxpayer and I had nothing to do with any of this and I knew about region, uh, but I kept myself up to speed. Regionalization, uh, the governor talking to this this morning. I think it was this morning about all new school projects that aren't aren't actually physically started yet will be closed down, and the fact that you need to go through referendum 
I would say, you know, this isn't what I should be doing right now. I should wait the two years and see what, what's going on then. And that would be prudent. That, that would be your opinion. However, when you hear from professionals that you have millions of dollars of work that needs to be done, you have life safety issues, you have buildings, you have modulars that are end of life that house your preschool program, and you have students every day that walk into a building that's 83 years old, and the average age of a building is 30 years in your surrounding districts. And our building is three times the average age of, a, of buildings in the surrounding district. And you're gonna wait two more years? What? That, that is anyone's decision to make. I just, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you the findings. And, the fi I, asked, and I asked about Derby, the school, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I guess it is. And I, I, from what I hear, they don't have much. So, you know, when they're talking about any uh, uh, community that has, what is it, 30,000 people or less, or was it 40? 40. 40. 40 or less shall be regionalized. So, I mean, it, it Did that bill pass, sir? Is, is that that's in the, it's in the, it's a it's a proposed legislation. It is proposed, and you know, and when you do for the most, and you did say that in most towns people are if there's less people every year, but if for some reason ours is pretty much holding its own. I mean, two years flies by like nothing. I, I uh, you know. I was talking to somebody and they said, what do you think about the Board of Ed investing the $20,000 on their own? And I said, well, if they wanted to do that, then, you know, I could support, you know, I could vote for, for supporting them. But, I mean, I just, with regionalization and all these other facts, I, I, I'd wait, to, if I was a gambler or whatever, a resident without knowing what's going on here, I would wait the two years. Two years would like snap in the finger. But if the city didn't have to spend twenty thousand dollars you'd be for it. Yeah, if the board of ed want it wants to take it, I would. All right, Mr. President, I'd well, like to modify Mr. my Mr. Mr. King motion. is oh, we'll one wait. second, Mr. King. Uh, also another thought, since we're beginning this year's budget process, which normally would have already started. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with why not proposing this as part of the school's budget requesting the funds then to look into it and it becomes part of it and it can go through the entire process um, including both the Board of Proportionment and Taxation which is actually who's supposed to approve the money we can approve and turn into an agreement or applying for a grant but they approve the money um, so putting it into the budget request would put it forward into the coming fiscal year allow you to look into it uh, do what you have to do and give us time and more information to look into it. I don't see why there would be a rush now. I mean, I know we're putting money, a lot of money into that building. Uh, boilers, uh, all the renovations, I believe we just, for some reason, I mean, that's dilapidated building you're saying that's falling down, but then we just put in air conditioning in the gym over the summer? Well, there's two things. Number one is that's, that's a big decision based on our boilers. We can spend a half million dollars on condensing boilers that are more energy efficient, but do we want to use all referendum money and some insurance money, or do we want to just do something now, which it, it begs, what is the long-term plan? And if the answer is we don't have one, that's problematic because it'd be very easy for me to say, yeah, spend money on absolute $500,000 boilers because we, you passed a referendum, I'm sure Mr. Evans would tell you. But there was a big flood there. We have some um, insurance money. Maybe somebody might say, should we just repair them to make sure that we can get through until we see what things happen? Or do we want to keep throwing more money to good? The only other thing is that if you're part of the budget, once again, that becomes part of an appropriation. So I think um, that's one thing that, that's why I think we asked for a special um, appropriation at this time to ask it for in it's in our during our budget process that adds to which something that's been talked about many times but adds to different things so the reason why we're doing it this way is to ask for as a special pro but also to get the alderman's blessing at the same time to say this is what a community needs to do together we've been fractured enough it's something that 
I was bringing it under the guise and under the auspices of this is something that we could do together and it should be a process that we could do together and it's for I think it's for it's for the students you can actually change the physical landscape your job is far greater than changing just economic land. you're going to change the physical landscape of Ansonia providing the opportunities that let's be honest makes people want to come to move to Ansonia you have you'll have a campus of a middle school high school usually you know if you look at all the research property value increases people want to move if you look at the population on the hilltop area itself in the, in the demographic study you have a large percentage at 65 and older you have those single family houses that are going to turn over who's going to move there and why do you want them to move there the demographic study will reveal that and you have to say how are we planning one year out two years but it's not that's kind of myopic we need the five-year ten-year plan if we have maybe in the works regionalization and our new school I could tell you as a parent if my child could be here in in Ansonia and have more opportunities that's incredible but you're actually at a different place in time where you can actually change the uh, the physical landscape of Ansonia and also Ansonia public <coughs> schools it's a it, 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 it's a it's a new time but it's also I think a time that we could do something together which I would like myself Mr. DeVarco, part of my skepticism, uh, in July of 2014, the mayor, myself, Dr. Malone, Bill Nimmons, uh, I believe uh, State Representative Linda Gentile, maybe one or two others, went to Hartford. We met with Commissioner Christian Pryor, Governor Malloy's Commissioner on Education. Mm -hmm. You must know him well, right? Well, Anyways, yeah. anyway, so we talked about XYZ, and what evolved from that, that meeting was we were going to, uh, we built portable classrooms behind Mead School, six portable classrooms for special ed students to keep our special ed kids in Ansonia, maybe have some other kids come from uh, out of district, whatever, but the, the savings was for $400,000, that was proposed to us. Now Mr. King and myself were on that, were on that uh, school building commission for probably three years. Are those classrooms filled with special ed kids and is there a $400,000 savings? I'm skeptical because I don't believe there is. Well. I could tell you, when I came on board, um, I tasked myself of addressing that because I heard it every time. And presently, right now, we have a collaborative with, with ACES. And you know what? We're working with ACES, and it's called our ACES Mead Collaborative. I hope by the beginning, by the start of next year, that we will have both the ACES together who runs. So it's, 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 a, it's a net zero cost because, first of all, the biggest thing is staffing psychologists, social workers, special ed teachers. I got it to the point where ACES is, is going to staff everything. They're going to use our you know, art, music, gym. They go to lunch with our students. So it hopefully end up bringing some of our kids back as they transition with their regular ed peers. I was tasked with it. We passed. Um, we came to an agreement with, with ACES because, to be honest, President Vicaro, it's, it could be a humongous savings. It, it really can. And I haven't seen it yet, and I'll be the first one to tell you, but we just worked on that, and I hope by the beginning of next year we'll have it staffed and we have hopefully a revenue sharing program because they're using part of our staff, and I really do hope that we will see, and I want to be on the conservative side. I, it's got, it's got, the numbers got to start somewhere. Once we hit 13 students in the program, we should see um, a, a return, but at this time, that's exactly that's something that I heard nothing was it wasn't really addressed because it was hard to staff and I didn't I didn't like the answer that it can't be done so with Dr. Marlone's blessing I found a way to get it done I haven't seen the uh, results yet but I really do hope that through working with ACES and partnerships we'll be able to net something but I I can agree with you I understand you haven't seen anything my hope is now that we do have something we're gonna work forward from that I'm like day, I'm day forward I'm not here to I mean, I wasn't here in the past, and I, I like learning about it, but I'm here to say I'm, I want to move us forward. I don't think there's a person at this table that doesn't want to build a new middle I, school. I, I understand. You know, we're in the middle of regionalization, I got it. and that's where, where my sentiments lie at this point. So any other questions, gentlemen, comments? Mr. Yes. Tripp? Yes, can I speak? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. I asked before, everybody's smoking. No, you interrupted Mr. King when he was talking, but that's okay. Okay, moving forward, sure. I'd like to amend my motion to, if it makes a difference to some people voting, 
remove the twenty thousand dollars. So it's just without the twenty thousand dollars, the motion to authorize the Board of Education to apply for the state of Connecticut. I'm sure somebody would second that. That's it. Yeah, we'll call vote. Thanks for your research on that. I'm stuck in the mic for me. And, and thank you for your, your, your contacts at Sacred Heart. Gentlemen. Hopefully they pan out. So um, I don't, I'm sure not everyone is going to agree with me on this, but I actually think it's a good idea, as you said, to look into the other options because if, if the regionalization doesn't pan out, to then have to go and have a what, an 85 or 86 year old building and then start from scratch. So to study it itself um, concurrently, it, to me, is a good idea, or kind of a no-brainer. Um, my concern is on the money, you know, what, where the money's coming from, um, and specifically, uh, what, what efforts have you guys had to generate that money, you know, through, you know, not generate it, but... It, 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 just so you know, it's very hard for we, we don't produce a product to generate things and to be honest we've been um, <clears throat> it's it's been very tight budgetarily speaking in in recent times I wish I could say there's net savings here or there like I said before I'm trying to work on any partnerships any collaboratives I mean I give you an example I, I sat down with mr. Bashar the same corp the company that you're using for your voice over IP we're using the same company we're trying to at least I mean, I figured communication is something that we need to work on. What's better than working on your phone systems together? So maybe we can actually have maybe like four-digit dialing and through the volume pricing of something like that, we save maybe like $2,000. But the thing is, it's not that. It's every time that we have an opportunity to do something like that, we're going to try. But um, it's not like um, we have this tremendous... Uh, Revenue product that I produce. Yeah, no, let, I, let, I know. Let me scratch that. I, I know. I wasn't asking you. Have you been generating money to, to pay for that? It, so let, let, me, let me rephrase it. <laughs> uh, I have a big sale. I don't know, Mr. Attorney. All right. I'll get the last two minutes um, <laughs> yeah. and everything you said. I guess my question was: I get based off this, I'm unclear what this goes towards. Is this an actual grant that you're applying for? Is this the application fee to have a grant? It is the compilation of something called Ed specifications. Ed specifications. It's what are the Ed specs of what is, what is the overall plan going to look like, and what are real hard numbers and instead of the kind of general numbers that they gave us in. Because that's not what I commissioned in our facilities and demographic study. For, it wasn't that wasn't the intention, but something came out of it. And the only way the state will ever look at anything, or only way I would present anything <coughs> to you know my alderman, is that. It has to be real numbers. And the, the thing is, we have more global numbers, but also by ed specifications, what is educationally appropriate? So, for example, ed specifications, the way they're going to write up, and you, they always out, it's like either one of these Malone the Broom, Silver Picture Sally, the people that do school construction every day, they, they put these together. Like I said, I read, read through the Groton one, and they'll say, all right, what is your school? What is the purpose? What is it? It's going to look like we're going to have pre-K through <coughs> five in our elementary schools. So now, as a parent, I can only tell you, I have a, a daughter in pre-K, one in kindergarten. Would I want one being across town and the other one, you know, being all the way, one's, one's at the middle school with middle schoolers as your pre-K, but we'll have a one-to-one. -one. That's part of our ed specifications. Most educationally appropriate is having a true six, seven, eight middle school. So they're going to write up at the ed specifications saying, this is what it's going to look like, six, seven, eight. And they also would, part of the plan of the ed specifications, they say, if you were to regionalize, what are the options? We say, all right, right now we have an 80,000 square foot you know, you know, plan. However, we can add a third story if we were to f fully regionalize, it depending on, and this is what, the other big piece about regionalization. Are they going to regionalize, if it happened, is it going to be K-12? Is it 6-12? Is it 9-12? It, it's just so you know, most regionalizations, people don't want their most little, little ones going that far from home. So people actually have to realize, you know, wh where do you want to start? So we have to have every different aspect in our ed specifications, and I don't mind writing grants, but that's not my, that's not my expertise. I haven't done it before, and this, that's what you're paying for. Yeah. Uh, Marco, uh, thank you for coming to a very proactive approach to this. The, um, so it's basically a feasibility study, in so many words? It's, 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 it's just more information for us to make a decision and right. say, you know what, 
do you want to move this forward? Is it something that is viable? Is it realistic? And now you'll have hard numbers and realistic specifications. And even if we wrote it into the plan where whoever does this will come and then speak to you know the alderman and say and explain exactly every step of the way, which I kind of want every step of the way everyone to know about the process, even if it moves forward or doesn't. But the thing is, we have to be everyone has to know the same thing so we can move forward together either move forward or at least be on at least the same page even if we disagree that's fine but the thing is at least everyone knows the same things that's what it is thank you if I, if I may I'm a little confused because are you asking for the ability to do a study because I, I read this to say that it's you're asking for permission to apply for a grant and then or accept or say no to the grant yeah. that's that's what the letter indicates I mean I in accordance with it says a grant to construct a new middle school and to accept or reject such grant and that's that's yeah. where well so i don't know what it's it's not it's the only thing would be granting would be granting funds that that's it's not there's not there's not like a special grant it's it's something that we have to do we have to provide at specifications so we can move either things forward yeah. and and it has to be right now when we when we left there <laughs> um the gentleman mr diamante said these are not these are soft numbers these don't these don't cut it you, you need and at the end if there's something that we find to be what we'd like to do then you can then petition to move it forward but you need to do all these steps before that's what we were told there's not a, a grant there's we have to commission at specifications and then you can then move the process forward this is one step first just so everyone knows this that's what we need to do first so you're not asking for our approval to give you the authority to apply yes. for a grant? Yes, we are giving you, we need your, we want the blessing from the alderman to say, this is something that we are all going to investigate together. That's what, that's what you really need, because it's, it has to be done in collaboration with your local municipality. It's, it's not something that you do, you know, boards that are going to do on their own, because guess what, when it comes at the end of a long day, it's going to go to referendum. And it's not like I can fund it. It's not like I could pay for it. This is something that we have to do together as a process. Does that? Well, I mean, I understand generally, generally. what you're saying. I'm just specifically, you're here. I, I'm, re I'm reading the letter, and it's not kind of jiving necessarily with what you're saying. So this says to give you the authority to apply for and receive a grant, well, accept or reject that grant if it's granted. And, and that grant would be the your school funding grant that you would get if we apply. If you apply for it, what you would receive would be. A, you would get grant money to build build a school, renovate a school, whatever we decide on. That's right, what and that. The port, and the additional portion, you would go to referendum to. For the exactly. Money. That's I, what. I, I get that part. I get the. I get that process. What I'm saying is that you're asking us to authorize you to make apply for the grant. Authorize for us to, to move forward through the process. We. It's, okay. I, it's I don't have the letter in front of me. If, if it seems, um, but. It's, I hate to be, it's, it's kind of like semantics. We, we need to do this one piece. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for, it's just yeah. it's a little bit. Authorize what, to apply to the commission. Who's yeah. present? Yeah. 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 Accept the grant. Reject. Yeah. Well, yeah. Normally, I'm under Except the, reject, yeah, what's the city, since we would have to pay the upfront cost to receive the grant and move it forward, we would have to pay the engineering cost to start our cost, everything. Yeah. Um, Send it to a point in the school building committee. I mean, all these things. This is my word, and the way I understand is asking just about the committee authority to accept or deny it on their own. Which we, we can't do on our on, on our own. We just. Mr. Marini, Maybe it's just a mess for the way it would work. Do that on own. You know Perhaps that. this is something yeah. we want to. Vote. Vote. You know that more than can do that on their own. Mr. Marini? We should ask him for the board to get Mar that. The power to do that. Yeah, one we're second. John, have, Mr. Marini, you have the floor? Um, I, I want to thank uh, Dr. DeBacco for sharing this with us. And I, I sort of share the thoughts of several of the aldermen. Study is always prudent because you can never really tell where things are going to go. There's a hope for regionalization, but of course, you never really know exactly how things are going to work out. It never hurts to study a topic as important as this. Uh, from our end, because we haven't had this conversation with the state, and maybe that's maybe that's the next step in the process is together along with the board of ed to have that a more detailed conversation 
the, one of the concerns may be what the obligations really are of this particular vote. Is it, are we commencing simply a feasibility study, as Alderman O'Brien said, where we're going to start getting more information on the, on the need and how we might go forward? Or is it more of an obligation? Is it more of a direct commitment to be doing X, Y, and Z as things move forward? That's the only part that I'm sort of thinking of sitting here without having talked to the state about it. And I, I would say to you, without a doubt, everything that we've done has to go through your school building committee. And But like you said, we're just trying to invest, investigate it. We need to do the ed, specific, ed specifications first. And then at the end of a lot, if we do move forward, we have to, I mean, there's a whole, I mean, as he was explaining, every step of the process, which I already told you, I'm not the guy to talk to you about the process. But I know the steps that he told us immediately and he told us in our, our board, I'm not going to look at anything unless your numbers are better, unless I know exactly what your, your ed plans are, because you know what? I need to know what it's going to entail its entirety. And then as that moves forward, if they do say that, all right, then you can apply, and then you ap apply for your grant, and if it is accepted, then we have to talk about bonding and all these other happy things. But like I said before, I'm not here to talk to you about the, pro the process. I, I don't know it it's in entirety, and I'm not going to speak to you. That's why I said from the beginning that gentleman Costa Simontes will talk to you about funding and the process. I, I just want to get us uh, and apprise everybody of what the study did reveal and how I think we could do something together as a community. So, Mr. Stone, <coughs> um, you know, I mean, is it all right if we table this till we get a, a better description from our corporation council? Is there already a motion on the table? table huh? There was already a motion on the floor. And Ms. O'Malley? I just want to thank, thank Joe for coming before this board. You know, I just wanted a little clarification because it's confusing because it's grant, it, there are grant funds and that's always confusing. I think this board kind of doesn't, is trying to determine the distinction between coming before the board and asking for a study, which, which is one thing and, and costs a certain amount of money. This, this is a prerequisite to getting a large grant. And again, you know, the, the, the uh, voters have the final say in that, and so you're right. So that has to get approved whether or not. But you, you cannot apply for a large sum of money without doing this step. I'm sure Casas will tell us. Um, so you are essentially uh, approving going forward with funding a, a new middle school. So you are you are allowing when, when you when you allow me to make pre-application for a grant, that means you're allowing me to apply for the grant and. Of course, you'll decide whether we accept it or not. But it's you, your. This is part of a larger, you know, the the middle school, the construction of the middle school. This isn't a. I'm coming before this board, and I would like a feasibility study done. There's a there's a distinction. That's a prerequisite needed for a multi million dollar project. It's so like what we did with the police station. Um. Before actually going out to get it from the USDA. We were bonding for that. We're not going to go through USDA now, but because it's it'll be cheaper for us. But um, I, I don't know. Similar, there are requirements for federal and state grants, and there are things that you must do in order to get that larger grant. And I'm just I just so wanted to clarify that. Even for if we do approve it tonight, uh -huh. we still have the option to say no later. Uh, no, you're in the you're in the application process. So the voters do have a have a have the That's option. That's what I'm saying. There's still a point to stop it. Sure. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I I thought I said that. When it comes to right. I thought I said it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stowe, do you have a table motion to table? That's where we're struggling. Is well, we don't Mr. know exactly Tripp what has the process. Motion. Right, they already got a motion on the floor. Okay, but a motion to table would override any other motion. No, it would not. Yes, I know it would. Wrong answer. I sat in that chair for four years. I've listened that long enough, Phil. You must. I'm, you know, I'm the guy you that took four a, years. Let me know, okay? I'm the I'm the guy that took an oath of office for the board of aldermen. You must be the other guy, the board of that guy. Uh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I'm yeah. elected by the people, just like you were, okay? And I have every right to talk, just like you do. That's right. So just the motion, because you don't like what I'm saying, that's too bad. Whatever. The motion on the floor. Tar Charlie made a motion to table. Is there a second? 
Mr. Mr. King, there's a second. So a motion to table um, overrides any motion that was previously said. No, it does not. Down. That is not Robert's rule of order. You are dead wrong. Mr. Marine, would you like to rule on that? Uh, you know, I think we have two conflicting motions. Um, you can take them up in order. No, a motion to table with a second overrides a motion on the floor. Can I make something clear? My the motion I made to table was just so that we could find out whether what Dr. Tobacco. 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 Tobacco, yes, sir. Mr. Tobacco is a little bit unclear, it sounds like to me. And we're a little bit unclear, it sounds like to me. So that if we could if we table it and then we could be a hundred percent sure because I, I would love nothing better than to see us working together. And it would be a good thing. So but patience is good too. I mean it's not if we have to wait another till the next meeting and find, and decide what to do. The Board of Ed's, when a part of the thing is the Board of Ed's willing to invest the $20,000 for this study grant, we're not sure. No, the Board of Ed's asking us for the $20,000. I think that was part of it. He, he was getting ready. Re Thank you, Mr. Stowe. Somehow, somehow, Mr. Tripp believes that the Board of Ed can invest this money. Out. They can also apply for grants. I, I'm, you know, that was my they can also apply for grants. But before we blow this thing up, I would like to see us have the knowledge to know is it correct? What? I mean, I think it has a much higher success chance of getting support and consensus from us if we have the information and we can review the information you just put online and all that. And I could think we're not against you, I can assure you that. Um, but I think it's it's just a, too much unknown. Where we, we, you know, if, we, if we if someone from a department department sorry department head from another thing came with a half a paragraph and asked for twenty thousand dollars, we get drilled. We say yes. Um, and I guess that's where where I struggle. Um, we don't, we can't even figure out exactly what what this is committing us to. Um, so I'm not I'm not against it, but I'm I actually don't even understand what we're. I just want to commission a study, and then if it if something that we find amenable to move forward, then we fill out we we'll file the application together, and then which the application is to apply for a grant, which is a school construction grant. But once you apply for that school construction grant, it's going to involve get monies of some kind, right. and which then that that goes out to referendum. So it's not like there's any. I mean, that's, I hate to say the Reader's Digest version of the, the process, but there's more machinations involved. But what we're asking is, let, do we want to investigate this together? Or, and let's, and that's where we're going because it says to commission that report or it specs, then file the application. There's definitely going to be an application fee of some kind, but all application process. And then hopefully it is, it's going to be, multiples of millions of dollars as, as a grant, but it's also going to be multiples of millions of dollars for us to to, to bond for. That's the only way school construction. And you know what? Maybe some of these things could be moved based on what you know Governor Lamont said just today, but it's something that I like I said before, maybe it's something to investigate together. <coughs> Mike, Martin, Mr. Dempsey? I just want to say um, I appreciate your time tonight very much. Thank you for that. Um, because I really um, what uh, Dr. Schubert said. Um, one thing I, I hate getting is I hate getting a proposal, you know, the night of, and you know, and, and then just getting some information and being expected to give a vote, and that goes kind of across the board. That's why we were here last week for four or four hours. So um, I would definitely feel better if I had my chance to read your report that you just posted today, um, and you know, perhaps ask a few more questions um, and bring this up. Thank you, Alderman Dempsey. Well, is there any sort of time frame? Is, there, is this time sensitive in the, t in the well, sense that it in, in the application needs to be in by March 1st? Or? Well, in, in, a, in a sense, I mean, when we spoke to Mr. Diamantes at the state, he says pretty much 
he asked a very direct question across to the gentleman Bill Silver from Silver Pitcher Selling. He goes, I want your, your opinion as a professional, not your paid opinion, which our study is over. He said, What's your, how much time do they have there? He's like, do they have two years? He's like, two years, and that's it. He's like, you, you guys need to get an application together. But, and I think that the date was June. I, I don't, don't quote me on that one, but I think by the end of the like, school year, that's when we had to have our things in place. He's saying, if, if, you're, if, you're telling, if the architect's telling you this is the dire situation, do you, because he was very blunt. He's like, I don't fund any renovations, but I'll help you fund a project vastly different. We're going to have to go to taxpayers to fund millions of dollars worth of life safety renovations. But if we could probably put good money to good use, I think that's what he that's what he was trying to say to us at that time. So the answer would be, I believe it was June, but I don't have my notes right in front of me, but I want to say it was June. So it was more time sensitive than anything, because I don't know. I haven't gone through an ed specification process, and I know it takes some time. And um, I just, the gift of time is something that, in this case, we really don't have so much of. But I, I understand your obligation to taxpayers having to do your investigation and, you know, and get the information. I don't knock that at all. So from Robert's rules, note, if more than one motion is proposed, the most recent takes precedence over the ones preceding it. For example, if a, a motion to table a discussion is proposed, it must be voted on before motion number three or a motion to amend can be decided. So it looks like I was right. Mr. President, yes. the motion to table can be appropriately used to temporarily postpone uh, action on uh, an underlying motion so long as new information comes to light that needs to be explored. Um, in this case, we've been discussing the, the idea of process, I think, to summarize it in one word. Um, so I do believe we'd be able to use a motion to table to temporarily override that motion. And of course, understanding that when it's explored, you go back to that main motion at the subsequent meeting. And one might that be? That would be up to the pleasure of uh, the board. And this could be next month or indefinitely? I'd like the motion for next month. Second. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to table on the floor. That, and a second. Does that supersede the other one? Yeah, I was joking. I thought so. Yeah. All in favor of the table this motion? Aye. 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 Yes. What motion? We're voting on the motion to table. There's another motion and a second to, to table until next month. So is it, a, is it a motion to table this until next month and make sure that this is on next month's agenda? Let's vote on the motion to table first, then we'll vote on the, other, the second motion. Is then, is, I guess, the subsequent motion, according to the rules that you just read, would need to be withdrawn. The motion to put it on next month's agenda. I think if there's one motion to table, we can so table it until a certain date. Here, you'd be, uh, the substance okay. of it is just to find the information. Right. Exactly. And, and being that the Board of Ed is willing to invest the money needing our cooperation, I don't know what, but that's that's part of the decision that's going to have to be made, is, is that we're okaying the Board of Ed to spend their own 20000 All right, so we're going to vote to table it yep. to next month. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that the motion? Yeah. Any discussion? Good idea. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? See you next month. Thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. All right. Communication number two.
multiple um, yeah. 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 yeah, there's one. Yeah, if you go down, there's a couple. Sheila, no. communication number two. <laughs> this is regarding a bid award for removal of furniture at 65 Main Street. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Rivers, is there a second? Mr. Yamet, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Communication number three. The city of Antonio was successful in receiving community connectivity grant in the amount of $385,000 from the state of Connecticut and DOT. We plan to use these funds for sidewalks, curbing, signage, and to enhance a successful restaurant and retail activity on Main Street. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Mr. Casalitis, Mr. Rivers, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> Communication number four. Tax and Center Review Committee from Jared Heon, myself, Sheila O'Malley, Chicago Rivers, request for permission to proceed with the drafting of a tax incentive agreement with Massimino's Restaurante, 85 Main Street, and Sony under the following terms. 50% abatement for any increased tax assessment, period, I'm sorry, for abatement for increased tax assessment, period not to exceed three years from March 1st, 2019 to March 1st, 2022. And that should be for any increased tax assessment. Is that correct, Mr. O Mr. Marini? The way it works is it's an abatement of the increase in the assessment. It's not a, it's not a reduction in the, the baseline. Okay. So that's the same way with, with any tax incentive under that program. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Heon, you have anything to add on this uh, motion? Mr. Heon, no? No, sir, I just said everyone did meet cooperatively. Thank you. Gentlemen, is there any discussion on this matter? This is a pizza restaurant on Main Street? Oh, uh, yes, that's correct. How did that pizza restaurant get electricity to that location? I'm sorry, how? How did that restaurant get electricity to that building when it was being built? I have no idea, I couldn't tell you. When we started building that building, there was no electricity on the east side of Main Street. So how did that uh, establishment when they were building it, get electricity to it? No, there, there was there was uh, electricity. There was an electrical upgrade to that side of the street for the entire block. So that's what the Board of Alderman voted for a couple of years ago, the $60,000 for an electrical upgrade to move electricity from East Main Street to Main Street, because that's the way it was explained to us. What you, what you did, what, what we did is increase the power generation currently or before that took place, UI had said that, that that whole line that was going to uh, power up that block was out of uh, compliance. And so this was a power upgrade which can be used for the entire block. And this restaurant was one of the first beneficiaries of that, correct? You want to say beneficiaries? I, I would say, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're using the upgraded power that's generated from that one, new line. So it was to spur the redevelopment zone. Yep. Departments. PD. So did the PD use that as well? Yes. Any new development zone in those buildings on Main Street trying to develop also part of this? Upgraded power lines, yes. And our senior center is in that building. <coughs> yeah. It's beneficiary of that power. So yeah. address the dead zone that we right. had there. Because I know there was a gap when they took the line to off of Main Street years ago. Yeah. They had 
Well, they had a wire yeah. hanging off of they a building. They had a hanging across yeah. places and through alleyways. Sort of the, the alley, which actually um, is a city easement, mm -hmm. and so of course we had some safety issues once we were looking at the redevelopment projects. We want to eliminate that hazard. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One. Was aye. there a motion? Sorry, there was no motion? No, nobody moved to approve it. There a motion to approve? Mr. Rivers? Aye. Seconded by Mr. Schuert. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. One opposed? Okay, resolutions. Resolution number one. This is a uh, the personnel policy, personnel rules and policies as amended. And um, you'll have a chance to review this, gentlemen. Mr. Dempsey. Yeah, uh, I don't know what changed. Yeah, there was no indication of what the difference was from the previous document. I'm okay. trying to side by side going back to the, the old one. We just left the three left the old one. So I, I would like to. Sure. You know, at least highlight the way the original document side by side so that we can do comparisons and changes. Make sure a red line. We could do a red line for the next phase. Okay. Motion to table to the next table. meeting. Um, Motion to table to the next meeting. Motion to table, second by Mr. Short. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Table. Resolution number two. I, Mr. Mr. President, yes. I, I, I would uh, propose we remove that resolution as we are keeping the 65 Main Street address. Okay, so yes. we're not going to deal with. Um, wait, motion number two is Railroad Avenue to Chief Daniel Hayes Drive. That's more than three. 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 No, 65 Main to 505. We're keeping it 65 Main, so no, no action. Uh, is needed from the board. Okay. I'm sorry, on the agenda, it's li listed as number two. Okay, on the resolution, is listed as number two. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to go to. Chief Daniel Hayes. Mr. Castellitis. Motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The resolution to change 65 Main Street to 505 East Main Street, where you're going to skip that, Sheila, is that correct? Good. Uh, you're going to uh, withdraw keeping, it. Maintaining the status quo. Yes, correct. <coughs> no address change. Does that have anything to do with where the entrance is going to be? Uh, that's, a, that's a very smart question. Yeah, they're moving. We're going to move the tower to the Main Street side instead of the East Main Street side for, for a couple of reasons. For the, yeah, for cost-saving cost reasons, for, for, for entrance and exit for the public, um, it looks like that's a better spot. And also in terms of digging in the parking lot. Where we can and cannot dig. The reason I asked was and how expensive that at is. At one point, there was talk about having a one way at the back there. Yes. Is that dead then? Is it going to be? Nope. Two? You mean one way for East, East Main, Main Street? Street. Yeah. By the police station. You're still going to have two, two, um, two lanes. Two ways two for lanes. PD. Okay. Also, public traffic is one way uh, to a point, and, but in that one way, it's two ways for PD only. Correct. For Correct. I'm just Correct, sir. Hey, Mr. Philip Palm. Resolution number four. Uh, salary resolution for the social media coordinator. Um, approving salary $300 a month for the like for the year. Make a motion. Mr. Rivers, motion seconded by Mr. Phil Palm. Any discussion? All in favor, Mr. So Mr. Schiller. Uh, it does include website as well. No? It says website and 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. All in favor say aye. Uh, Any yeah. opposed? Mr. Castellanos? Motion carried. Resolution number five. This is a vote to adopt the ADA compliance model as the city of Ansonia's formal procedure from inspecting and monitoring new construction and substantial rehabilitation for compliance with fair housing and ADA laws. In order for the state to get uh, or in order for the city to get state grants, uh, the city must have this document in place. Mr. Mr. Yaman? Seconded by Mr. O'Brien. There's discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Resignations. I have a letter of resignation from David DiVincenzo. I'll read it. Dear Mr. Chairman, due to changes with my work and family schedule, unfortunately, I will not be able to maintain my commitment as Public Works Commissioner, I feel it's best to make room for someone who can devote their time to this board. That said, I will be resigning from the board effective today because I won't be able to make our scheduled meeting on February 5th. I want to thank you and the mayor for opportunity to serve the city of Ansonia this past year. <coughs> Respectfully, David Denarchy. This letter is dated January 25th. Motion to accept the letter. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Anyone? Mr. O'Brien. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. I also have a letter from um, Crystal White. Um, hi, Ralph. This email is to inform you that I am resigning from the Cultural Commission effective immediately. I thoroughly enjoyed working with all of you over the last few years. If you need any assistance from volunteers, please let me know, and I will try to work with my try my best to help out as needed for future events. Best of luck to you all. Thanks, Crystal. Motion to accept this letter, Mr. Yaman, uh, Mr. Schuler, I'm sorry, and second by Mr. Rivers. We have uh, Mr. Yaman yeah. do all communication. I agree with that. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. Any yeah. opposed? Appointments. The mayor's letter dated February 7th. For the Conservation Commission, for a four-year term, Daniel Bosquez, Republican, 99 Jewett Street, Ansonia, Connecticut. His term expires. February 12th, 2023. Your motion to approve. Mr. Philippone. Second by Mr. Yalman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Cultural Commission, three year terms. Irene Crown Kirby, Republican, 92 Frank Franklin Street, Ansonia. Term expires 12 31 19. Replacing Mr. Duhanic. Duhanchik. Your motion to approve. Mr. Rivers. Second by Mr. Schuer. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Kaylee Mihalko, unaffiliated. 22 North Colane, term expires 12-31-19 to replace Crystal White. Motion to approve by Mr. Yaman. Mr. Rivers seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Inland Wetlands Com Commission, two-year terms. Daniel Bosquez, Republican, 99 Jewett Street, term expires 2 12 -23. Motion to approve. Mr. Yaman, seconded by Mr. Schuert. Thank you. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? The Economic Development Commission, five year term. Jeff Sweeney, unaffiliated voter, 11 Cottage Avenue. Term expires 228 24. This is a reappointment. Mr. Yaman, seconded by Mr. Rivers. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Planning and zoning, five year term. Maureen McCormick, Conrado, Democrat, 83 Hill Street. Term expires 212 24. Mr. Yaman. So moved. And Mr. Schuert, sec second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Police Department Building Commission. Lieutenant Andrew Coda, acting chief Andrew Coda. To Elm Street. Uh, Mr. Kasselitis, seconded by Mr. Philippone. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. New business, Rufus Street Extension. Name change mm -hmm. and possible action. Yes. Uh, so uh, a city engineer, Fred D'Amico, has identified the section of Rufus Street. It's right off my street. <laughs> right. And, and I guess this came before the board a year ago, maybe? About a year ago? To, to, uh, 
to, um, we already take care of that street, so it's actually just renaming it to Rufus Street Extension. It's a small portion of Rufus Street. So what do you want to rename it to? Rufus Street Extension. That's what it says <laughs> on the street side. It does? It's already yeah. there. But it was never officially, it's, it's technically all Rufus Street, which has created a problem. Or at least the point of confusion. <laughs> People sure, want sure. to be on Rufus Street. People want to know that they're actually on Rufus Street Extension. Yeah, that yeah. Well, that it's section, right well, that it's technically that, that section is not ours. Right? It's, it's all right? Rufus, technically. It's not, it hasn't it just been. Curves, it just become so referred so to it as Rufus Street. Street Extension. It wasn't part of Rufus Street. Is that a code of snow time? That, that stop sign right there where the street sign is? Oh, I know. Okay. okay. It really it. only affects one house, and that one Second. house was very confused when yeah. they went to sell it, and they realized there was no such real thing as with the street extension. So this is really just iron out that wrinkle forever. Okay, motion for Mr. Castellani. Second by Mr. Dempsey. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. Old business, possible action and discussion regarding secretary salaries. Shouldn't this go to the salary committee? Discussion, probably. Yes. Okay. You have a lot of old records for that, right, Chad? Yes, we do. A lot of time spent on that issue. It was almost. <coughs> we have a motion to refer us to the salary committee. So I make a motion. Mr. Rivers and Mr. Yaman, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Anything regarding uh, Ethan Otto, No. No? Okay. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Yellman. Secondly, Mr. Short. All in favor say aye. Aye. Adjourn. Aye.